Mary just moved into a new apartment. Although it's a bit of an old apartment, the price is meager compared to the market. Plus, it's very close to her office, so she's happy to buy it. Today is the weekend. She tries to finish all work at the company as soon as possible to go home and tidy up her things. Her lover will also help her tonight, and the two will have a romantic evening together. Thinking of meeting her lover soon, she felt full of happiness and forgot the fatigue of a tiring working day. The old owner of the apartment left no valuable furniture behind. There is only the sofa in the living room and a bathtub. After cleaning the living room, Mary quickly rushes to the bathroom to take a shower. She doesn't want her sweetie to see her sloppy. She plans to have dinner outside because she doesn't have time to cook today. While soaking in the bath, she sings her favorite song. There is nothing happier than relaxing in a warm bathtub after a hard day's work. Mary suddenly feels someone strangling her and pressing her hard into the water. She tries to escape, but it is impossible. She cannot see the culprit. At this moment, she knows she cannot escape from death. A few moments later, her lover finds her dead and quickly contacts the police. After investigating Mary's case, the police soon discovered something strange about her newly purchased apartment. There have been many deaths in this apartment so far, and the cause of death was being drowned. The victims are spotted soaking in the bathtub. SCP-1299 is a white porcelain over steel freestanding bathtub. It was discovered when the occupants of a house in Ohio experienced an unusually high rate of apparent suicides and murders via drowning. A new story on the anomaly brought the house to the Foundation's attention. The Foundation quickly suppressed all information regarding the crimes and secured the house in question. No anomalies were observed until one agent turned on the handle to SCP-1299, which activated despite being disconnected from the house's water supply resulting in the agent's death. The Foundation quickly secured the bathtub and moved it to its current containment. When a living human touches one of the two handles on SCP-1299, the tub will begin filling with water. Once the tub is filled, an invisible force, designated SCP-1299-1, will pull the subject into SCP-1299 and force the subject underwater. This process has been named Procedure F30. An imprint of a pair of hands will appear around the subject's neck while they attempt to escape. Barring outside intervention, the subject will invariably drown, at which point the water will begin to drain via unknown means until the containment chamber is completely dry. The corpse may then be retrieved safely. If, by the 26th night of each month, no living body has touched the handles or is in the room, SCP-1299-1 will manifest and leave SCP-1299, leaving a trail of wet, humanoid footprints. It will seek out the nearest living human body, which it will drag back to SCP-1299 and begin to drown as normal. If the process is interrupted and the subject pulled away from SCP-1299-1, the subject's personality will undergo a complete resequencing. SCP-1299-1 is intangible and impossible to damage by any means yet tested and does not appear on thermal imaging or X-ray scanning. Several tests have been conducted to gather more additional information about this SCP. Testing Log 1299-A Subject 1 D-Class Personnel D-985 with background in plumbing Conditions D-985 instructed to attach SCP-1299 to newly constructed water pipe Result SCP-1299 began filling autonomously, and SCP-1299-1 immediately dragged D-985 into SCP-1299 to drown him. 
immediately after D985's death. Footprints characteristic of SCP-1299-1 formed a trail towards and through the locked door to the containment chamber. SCP-1299-1 proceeded to grab one of the two guards stationed outside and pull him through the still locked door into SCP-1299. Site personnel were alerted of a containment breach. Addendum 1299-0-1 A researcher who was at the time overseeing SCP-1299 attempted to alter the conditions of Procedure F-30 without proper authorization. D-1130 was introduced to the testing environment and instructed to enter the bathtub per regulation. But when SCP-1299-1 appeared, the researcher breached containment and attempted to pull the subject out of SCP-1299. After approximately one minute of struggle, subject was removed from SCP-1299 and the instance of SCP-1299-1 disappeared. D-1130 seemed extremely distressed, asking where he was and insisting that he had just been in his house. Upon further examination and interview, D-1130 referred to himself as Mary, a female who had been killed by drowning three years ago in New York. Her boyfriend had been convicted of her murder, though the evidence was purely circumstantial. After gathering all available information, subject was terminated. An interview between the subject and the researcher has been recorded. Where? Where am I? You are in the hospital. You appear to have fallen and suffered brain trauma. Now, if you can focus, we need to know what your name is and the last things that you remember. Mary. Mary Grace. But a hospital? I was just in my house. I decided to take a bath. What was the date and time? August 24, 2001. About 6.30 in the evening. Thank you. What happened next? Well, I went upstairs to the bathroom and... I don't... I don't know. It all happened so quick. Uh... D1130, what happened so quick? What was the last thing you remember? Please, I need to get out of here. He's gonna come. He's gonna come. D1130 got up and attempted to grab the researcher, but was shot twice by a nearby agent. Closing statement. Subject's description was found to match the exact date and suspected time of the drowning of Mary Grace by her boyfriend. Testing log 1299-B. Subject, two D-class personnel, D701 and 803. Conditions, D701 instructed to touch handle, then D803 and D701 both instructed to lie down in SCP-1299. Result, after 30 seconds, SCP-1299-1 appeared and attacked both subjects simultaneously. Three guards pulled the subjects from the water. Both subjects claimed to be Olivia Munn, a 25-year-old female whose husband killed her by drowning her in the bathtub. Each subject expressed extreme distress at the other's assertions. Both were able to recall intimate details of Olivia's life. D-803 was terminated, and D-701 was used as a subject for Procedure F-30. Subject, 1 D-Class Personnel, D-942. Conditions, D-942 sent in wired to recording net attached to EEG and ordered to perform Procedure F-30. Security instructed to pull subject out after 5 seconds. Result, at 1.25 seconds after SCP-1299-1's attack, D942 briefly displayed brainwave patterns consistent with the onset of a grand mal epileptic seizure, before almost immediately returning to that of an excited state typical of a person being drowned. SCP-1299-1 pulled recording net off subject after two seconds. Subject. 1D-Class Personnel, D-1074. 
Conditions, D1074 sent in to perform procedure F30. Security instructed to remove sample of water from SCP-1299. Result, F30 enacted successfully, water sample retrieved. Sample showed no anomalous properties. Mineral concentrations and pH were found to be typical of municipal tap water from New York. Subject, 1D class personnel, D873. Conditions, SCP-1299 filled using hose attached to external water source. D873 positioned in containment chamber in case of SCP-1299-1 activation. Result, immediately upon SCP-1299 being completely filled, SCP-1299-1 attacked D873, initiating procedure F30. Subject, 1D class personnel, D1132. Conditions. SCP-1299 filled with bleach supplied by hose. D-1132 positioned in containment chamber in case of SCP-1299-1 activation. Result. <laughs> no activation of SCP-1299. <laughs> no appearance of SCP-1299-1. <laughs> Subject. 1D class personnel. D-894. Conditions. D894 brought in to enact procedure F30 as scheduled. Result. Upon seeing SCP-1299, D894 retreated to the far corner of the room and stayed there screaming until escorted out of the room by security personnel. An interview between D894 and researcher has been recorded. Hello, D894. You seem to have previous knowledge of SCP-1299. You should blow that thing up. That goddamn tub ruined my life. And nobody believes me. Nobody ever fucking believes me. Believes you about what? D894. Me and my wife just bought a house in Boston. And the day after I moved in, the next damn day, I hear screaming coming from upstairs. So I rush into the bathroom and I see her thrashing in the tub. By the time I get to her, she's dead. So it turns out the neighbor also heard the screams and called the cops. Well, guess who gets the murder charges? But you guys have the tub now, which means you stopped it. So you can tell the world the truth. You can get me off this whole sentence. Thank you for your cooperation, D894. Your case will be attended to shortly. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Closing statement. Subject was given B-class amnestics and moved back to holding facilities. Thank you so much for watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel, press the bell icon, and never miss an update.